Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Hunter from Out Ash Photography. Join me tonight as we're doing a part two of the full on test of the brand new ZWO ASI 585mm Pro. But this time we're gonna be going mono with narrowband filters. Now, unfortunately, I only have like maybe three hours that I can shoot a target. And as far as for narrowband wise with uh, SHO filters, because for one, we have uh, the winter Milky Way beginning to leave us very quickly as we are now in uh, galaxy season, as a matter of fact. And it's kind of the worst timing to try and do this test here of some nebulae with the narrowband filters. But we're going to try and make the best of it as we can, because I can't really rely much later in the night especially when i know that another powerful storm is on the way starting tomorrow night which will be the, the thursday in this video and we're going to be expecting more torrential rainfall and the worst part is too uh, we got a lot of moon to work with as well so this is actually going to be a really good test with these kind of narrowband filters i'm not going to tell you exactly what filters these are as of yet because that's going to be in another video as i review them because these are some pretty good filters that i happen to get my hands on and i'm really excited to be fully testing these out for tonight now the target of choice i'm going to be picking for this evening which i'm going to be doing one hour in each of the bands one hour in hydrogen alpha one hour in oxygen three and one hour in sulfur two in that respective order because well once it gets lower in the sky at about the hour three, it's going to be definitely the sulfur uh, band pass that's going to help a little bit more since that is, you know, more reluctant to dealing with some light pollution and dealing with a little bit lower in the sky. But the target I'm going to be choosing is the Monkey Head Nebula in the constellation of Orion. This frames perfectly inside of this scope here with this camera. Actually, it almost fills up the entire field of view once it's orientated the right way, which luckily with the CWO CAA, I can be able to manage to do that so this is going to be a great test here because i've done this target many times before but i'm really curious with only having three hours of data if it's still going to look better than with my one shot color camera with co uh, capturing between two duo narrowband filters both hydrogen alpha oxygen three and then oxygen three and sulfur two which i've gotten about 10 hours worth once we had the test before with just with the uh the previous video the lrg beef uh video where i only had about eight hours worth on the uh, messier 51 and it was far far better than my 18 hours with the one shot color camera and adding hydrogen alpha to it as well so this is definitely going to be a nice full test of this and i'm really excited that once things get down towards nightfall and we can begin setting up our imaging sequence and start to see what kind of power and what kind of detail this little camera can output so once again with this test the scope of choice is going to be my 102 millimeter explorer scientific triplet refractor with a focal ratio with the reducer down to 571 millimeters or an f 5.6 on top of the pier we'll be using my zwo am5 strain weight gear mount and of course with the camera of choice we're using the obviously zwo asi 585 mm pro the monochrome version inside of the filter wheel here i have three narrowband filters of choices for h a sulfur 2 and oxygen 3 controlling everything it's going to be the zwo asi air plus and guiding using the sv bony 60 millimeter guide scope with the zwo asi 678 mono as my guide camera so we're quickly approaching nightfall here. I'm going to go ahead and do some polar alignments as I had to put my uh, cover back on because of the wonderful irrigation that we deal with here or just on the other side of the field. But we're going to be doing some polar alignment and then I will see you on the computer when we're looking at throughout the ASI air. Now that it's fully dark outside, we are already polar aligned. Let's go ahead and get an image sequence ready to go inside of the plan mode here as we're going to be doing some adjustments. And the target is NGC 2175, which is the Monkey Head Nebula. And when we go over to the Sky Atlas, you can see how perfect the field of view is for this and it is basically spot on fills up the entire center of the sensor and it is a great location that we're going to be working with so 
With that, inside of the details, like I mentioned, I'm only basically going to be able to have about three hours to shoot this before it gets down too low on the horizon. So we're going to do one hour in each of the narrowband channels, hydrogen alpha first, oxygen three, and then I'm going to finish off with sulfur when it's a little bit lower on the horizon since sulfur is a little bit more resistant to some light pollution and with the moon that's out right now. I don't really expect to have a whole lot of results in the oxygen spectrum because the moon right now it's roughly at about 70 to 75 percent but this is the only chance i'm going to be getting uh anytime soon as far as for doing these kind of tests so with everything all set and ready to go we're going to go ahead and hit the okay button it's going to salute to the target and we're going to patiently await our first exposure of hydrogen alpha data as the first exposure of hydrogen alpha is beginning to roll on in i'm very excited to see the results from this and Oh my goodness, look at that wonderful view. And like I mentioned, it fits perfectly inside of the field of view here. And just look at all of the detail, especially down here, right near the bottom or like where the faces of the monkey head, since it is turned towards the side. But this is absolutely beautiful. Look at the intricate detail, especially down there of some of the nebulosity region and the dark structures really picking up through here. So even with a 75% moon, this looks great and some great results. So I'm hoping here with uh, three hours, we can get a decent image between, you know, all three of the channels of only one hour each. So we're going to go ahead and let this run its course. Looks like the skies are going to be clear throughout this entire duration. And I will see you back inside of PixInsight when we go ahead and start taking a look more in depth of the individual subframes and once we start stacking everything. All right, now that we are in PixInsight, good news is we did manage to get an hour in each of the band passes before the clouds came in. So we actually had some data to work with during this very short three hour duration. And I went ahead and stacked them inside of PixInsight. And we're going to go check it out, which uh, individual channel looks like on the monkey head. So the first one here is the hydrogen alpha and it looks great right off the bat that i don't really see much in the way of any you know gradients either being that the moon was like 75 percent but i'm loving the structure down here in the corner you can see the dark nebulae shining nice and brightly out in front of all this hydrogen gas everything just looks nice and wonderful for this and going over towards the O3 channel, and being that O3 is heavily affected by the moonlight too, actually surprisingly got a decent amount of O3, but you can also see that it is a bit noisy. I mean, that's to be expected because of, you know, with the moonlight, and this is being a little bit lower in my western sky. And then looking at the sulfur too, we do have some nice uh, structure right along the outsides of the nebula in itself just to kind of give it a little bit of some fling and we're going to be able to combine these quite nicely. Now I'm not going to go through the entire process of how I process this entire image. I'm going to make this into a separate video to be added to my workflow series for monochrome that I just started with the LRGB one just the other week. So I'm going to kind of speed through this process here until we get to the point of what our final image is. And the first one I start off is the hydrogen alpha. I went ahead and changed the label to HA so I know which is what I'm working with. I first did a little bit of some background extraction so I can get rid of any little gradients that I've seen from the moonlight and being a little bit lower to the horizon. And that was pretty simple in itself. Did some blur exterminator and then I went ahead and stretched the image. And this is what our stretched hydrogen alpha looks like. Then I went over to sulfur, did the same exact thing. Some DBE, changed it to S2. Went ahead and did some blur exterminator and then I went ahead and stretched the image as well. And this is our stretch version of the sulfur too. And then I finally went over to the oxygen, same thing, change it to O3, did some DBE, get rid of any of the gradients that we've seen and kind of help with more of the moonlight. Did some blur exterminator as well and then stretched the image. So that is our uh, stretched oxygen three right there. 
Now the fun part is we get to combine all three of our channels using the LRGB combination and this is what we combine to get. Now it looks kind of green, I know, but further on down in the processing line, we'll actually get rid of this kind of super green image because one, this is a very strongly hydrogen region. We use some other processes like narrowband normalization and we can, you know, kind of tweak the colors a little bit and it changes away from that green to kind of like a more natural, you know, SHO looking photo. But we also have seen a bunch of this like purplish magenta in the background. We got rid of that as well by using the correct magenta stars tool. So now we're actually looking at a more even background. So then I remove the stars from the image because I'm going to work on the nebulosity in itself. Did a little bit more of some like dark structures. So you can really start bringing out more of the, uh, the dark nebulae in the background. And you can really see the differences between when I turn it off and turn it back on. Then I went ahead and made a little bit more of some sharpening to kind of uh, make these edges pop a little bit more and be more defined. Then the fun part is starting to do a little bit of some, you know, curves transformation and some mask to start bringing up more of the colors. As you can see, it's starting to get a little bit more saturated. Did some like RGB workspacing just to kind of enhance more of like the blues and the sulfur two regions. And I continue to go through all of that, do a couple of rounds. And then we get to, you know, bringing out more of the nebulosity and colors, especially in the oxygen. Did some noise reduction here, uh, a little bit of some more histogram transformation. And then before I combine the stars back, this is what I'm left with. And this is a wonderful looking image, especially for only three hours of data for this is actually really, really impressive because this is actually honestly better than the one shot color version I had one and I got 12 hours of data. So really makes a huge difference when you're shooting with monochrome and you're you having the ability to use 100% of your sensor per of the channel instead of dividing it up in with the Bayer matrix, like with hydrogen, you're only using 25% of your sensor instead of the 100 with this. So already this looks very impressive. And then there's a little bit more some curves transformation, especially with the last final, you know, adjustments to the histogram and more of the color saturation. And this is looking to be a beautiful image. So then I went ahead and started working on more of the stars, you know, bringing in a little bit more of some saturation. I could have done some RGB stars if I had the chance to, but I just wanted to get this fairly quickly. And then this is the final result with just three hours of data. First test of, you know, SHO with this monochrome camera for someone who hasn't owned a monochrome camera before for doing deep sky photography. This is a great first result. And I'm really excited going further on down the line to doing a lot more projects, especially once it gets closer to the summer months to be able to really shoot some nebulae out there. And this is great. This is a wonderful camera for the price in itself, be able to not only have beautiful LRGB imaging, like with some galaxies, especially this time of year, but this is going to be a great tool for doing nebulae as well as we're transitioning a little bit closer towards the summer season. So once again, highly impressed with this 5A5 monochrome sensor, and I can't wait to basically just keep using this for now on at this point and i think i'm fully convinced that i am now a monochrome fan 100 percent. so i hope this video helps you kind of you know if you're unfamiliar or you know kind of hesitant on going over to a monochrome sensor i highly recommend it because it is so much easier to work with this data and for this only being three hours worth and one hour in each channel this is an amazing result regardless so i hope you subscribe to the channel leave a like a comment if you have this sensor or if you have any questions about wanting to transition over to monochrome i will be here to help and also a big shout out to zwl for helping me get this uh, sensor fairly quickly since 
this was a pre-order for a while, but they were able to get it to me a lot sooner to be able to do some of these reviews. And I'm going to be having some more videos in regards to, you know, the 5A5 here a little bit down the line once I have some more clear skies. So be sure to subscribe, keep checking back, and as always, clear skies, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.